Nowadays, you can call a giant a person with a stature of over six foot seven. Such people impress. But compared to giants of the past, we can call them dwarves, let alone people with an ordinary stature. How did giants of the past look? And what does it tell us about the fact that they dominated the planet? You'll learn that in this episode. Infinity's with you. Today, you'll see giant people that existed in reality. When you look at this picture, you can't believe that someone so large and tall could exist in the world. Yes, there may never have been giants exactly like this, but there was something close to it. Here we see the result of computer modeling, which was conducted by scientists who studied the giants of the 19th century, as well as the remains of giants found all over the world. Very soon, you'll see both. Well, I suggest that we start with real giants that have been documented. In general, there are giants in the present day. For example, Sultan Kosin, the tallest man on the planet. The height of this Turk is eight foot two, so he literally looks down on any person in the world. Sultan is so gigantic that he can't even walk normally without a cane. Very difficult for him to do without it. Or there's Brahim Tequila, a Moroccan who's only slightly smaller than Sultan. There are also famous giants like Chinese basketball player Yao Ming, who's even become a meme, or his U.S. sport colleague Shaquille O'Neal, in whose hands an ordinary bottle looks like a toy bottle. Yes, even people just over six foot seven are truly impressive. We don't see them often. It's unlikely that many of you have such tall acquaintances. By the way, write in the comments your height and how tall is your tallest acquaintance. Nowadays, there are not so many giants. However, only 100 to 150 years ago, the situation was quite different. Then the giants were much more numerous, and moreover, they looked as if they'd been even larger. Baptiste and Antoine Hugo are considered two of the most famous. The brothers were called Alpine Giants. They traveled all over America and Europe, impressing everyone with their height. According to some reports, the brothers' height reached almost 8 foot 6. Even more famous was the Canadian Edouard Boupre, a giant with the height of more than 8 foot 2, who worked as a circus performer and surprised the audience not only with his size but also with his insane strength. It's said that he easily bent iron bars and lifted horses on his shoulders. In addition, the Canadian successfully participated in wrestling matches against the strongest people of his time. And this is what an ordinary Chinese man from the 19th century looked like. Okay, he's not ordinary, of course. Anyway, such giants were not rare in Asia. We know his name was Cheng, and in this shot, he's pictured with his wife and agent. Not only the height of the giant is impressive, but also the length of his braid. I wonder how long it took him to grow it. And this is Cheng's contemporary, the Mongol Andor Gongor. According to various sources, his height varied from 7 foot 9 to just over 8 foot. The Mongol giant was the personal bodyguard of Mongolia's ruler, Bad Khan. He, by the way, became the last great Khan in the history of Mongolia. Of course, it's worth mentioning Robert Wadlow, the tallest man in history, whose height was officially confirmed. The giant's height was 8 foot 11.09 inches. Other parameters were also striking, from weight and leg size to length of his palm. But even this is not the limit. It's believed that there were even taller people. One of them is a giant from the Russian Empire, Fyodor Machnow. According to some reports, his height was 9 foot 4.2 inches. That is, he was even taller than Wadlow. True, in this case, the growth was not officially registered, but even without this, it's clear that he was a real giant. And even that's not the limit. According to various reports, 100 to 150 years ago, giants with a height of 9 foot 10 and more lived, except that they were not registered anywhere. In addition, in the even more distant past, people were even taller and larger. And this is indicated not by old photos and videos, but by various findings of archaeologists and not only. One of the most famous archaeological findings that are associated with giants is considered to be these human bones found in France. In 1890, an anthropologist discovered bones of enormous size in the excavations of a Bronze Age cemetery in Castelnau. Three fragments were found, a shoulder bone, a tibia, and a fibula. Only a couple pictures have survived. It's hard to tell anything from them, but what you can see is something really phenomenal. Scientists analyzed the remains and concluded that the volume of bones was twice as large as parts of a normal human skeleton. 
Plus, judging by the spacing of anatomical points, they were nearly twice the length of a normal skeleton. After studying and running simulations, the researchers concluded that the owner of these bones could have been about 11 foot 6 inches tall. Yes, you'd think it was fake, that some 19th century joker had slipped fake bones into the burial ground. However, the scientists had considered that too. The fragments were rechecked several times by different groups of researchers, and they found no fake. It was then that they came to a conclusion that read, the giant represents a very tall race. That is, anthropologists stumbled upon the remains of a man who could be a representative of another race, the forgotten race of giants. Of course, the giant from Kesselnau is not the only proof that giants walked the planet in the distant past. Scientists have found other remains that are hard to believe. For example, here we see an excavation in the desert during which archaeologists found the remains of a giant man. You can see how large the skull they found was. It's bigger than even the archaeologist with the hat who's sitting near it. It turns out that in height, it was more than 3 foot 3 inches. It's an abnormal figure for a head. Not even the giant from Castle now is that huge. Here's another similar skull. It appears to be slightly smaller than the previous one, but it's still incredibly huge. And you can see the bones clearly here. Archaeologist in a t-shirt, apparently, sitting on the bones of the hand. And they're twice as much longer than his shin. And this was discovered in Wisconsin in the early 20th century. Scientists found a whole cemetery of giants, but only one photograph survived. Even that's enough to realize that these skulls are abnormally large. It feels like they're three times larger than normal skulls. According to scientists, the length of the skeletons reached up to 9 foot 10 inches. They recalled that they had never found anything like this. What's also interesting is that these skulls from Wisconsin have a double row of teeth. This led scientists to think that they'd found a new species or subspecies of humans. An even larger skeleton was found in Australia a few years ago. According to archaeologists, it was at least 16 foot to 19 foot 8 inches in tall. Some think it's fake, whereas many believe this photo. Personally, I believe in such a thing, considering how many other similar finds are discovered around the world. For example, here we see the skeleton of a giant woman excavated in Poland. There's no exact data about it, but I think it's 16 foot to 19 foot 8 inches tall. Another giant was found in England during mining operations in the late 19th century. Scientists assume that they came across one of the Atlanteans, the very inhabitants of the mysterious Atlantis. His dimensions are definitely Atlantean. The giant's height exceeded 11 foot 6. If we believe what they write about the Atlanteans, then in general, everything is the same. What's also interesting, the giant had six fingers and toes. As with the skulls from Wisconsin that had two rows of teeth, we're dealing with some sort of anomaly once again. Or maybe it's not an abnormality, but really a subspecies of humans. A subspecies with extra teeth and fingers. After all, when you have a height of 9 foot 10 to 13 feet, an extra finger or tooth certainly doesn't hurt. Scientists also found fragments, not whole skeletons, making them ask questions. For example, this scientist holds a bone, the length of which was estimated at 13 foot 11 inches, although it's possible that it was even longer. Given that it's a thigh bone, just imagine how tall its owner must have been. I think he would have been 16 feet to 20 feet tall, at least. That's what you believe when you look at this photograph, the very bone that was placed in the sketch of the supposed giant. A modern man would have been only half a thigh long. Here's another interesting finding, the jaw of a giant. For clarity, it was compared with the jaw of a modern man. It's white. The difference is several times obvious. There are many other similar findings, whereas the majority of them are described as outright fakes or they just try not to disclose such discoveries. More and more frequently, you can hear in the news about how scientists found giants with a height of 6 foot 7 or so. I agree, ancient 6 foot 7 tall people may be considered giants, but what about 9 foot 10 inches or 16 foot 5 inch tall skeletons? Why aren't they discussed? Moreover, there's information that at the beginning of the 20th century, the Smithsonian Institute in the States destroyed thousands of skeletons of giants that were stored there. It would seem, why destroy such findings? Why not just display them? They would become incredibly valuable exhibits. Theorists believe that this way the authorities force scientists to keep silence so as to not interfere in history and not to reveal the truth about the existence of a race of giants in the past. For the same reason, the media don't really spread about the findings of huge skeletons often recognizing them as fakes. 
But there's something that the authorities, the media, or anyone else can't hide. Well, or hardly at all. It's about the footprints that giants have left in the past. All over the planet, scientists or ordinary people regularly find huge footprints that man could not have left purely physically. To be more precise, a man of ordinary size could not leave them. Only some giant from the distant past could. And such footprints are astonishing in their size. For example, here. A footprint in the rock on one of the mountains of Sri Lanka. You can clearly see that this footprint is almost the size of a man, and it can't be a natural formation. It's a footprint, not a rock structure. Here's another footprint. This time it was found in China. It's smaller than the previous one, but still very large. A man could easily fit his foot in there. There's easily enough room for a couple or three more of these feet. Here's another giant footprint. Here you can see even more clearly how wide and long it is. It's hard to imagine what size the giant who left this footprint had. And this footprint was found in a rock in South Africa. Once again, we see a footprint the size of a man. It's almost four foot three inches long. Scientists have come to the conclusion that such a footprint could have been left by a man about 33 feet tall, no less. We can see an equally impressive footprint here. It feels as if a person could easily fit into it if he curled up. In fact, there are many such tracks. And what's interesting, they all have in common not only their size, they're often found in rocks or imprinted in stones. Theorists believe that this suggests that a race of abnormal giants existed on our planet a long time ago. The thing is that all this was able to freeze and fossilize. It's hard to say exactly when they might have lived on the planet. However, some say this was dozens of millions of years ago. Others estimate this discovery as 30 million years old, while individual theorists believe the giants could have lived 70 million years ago or even earlier. But there were dinosaurs on the planet at that time, you'll say. That's right. And theorists have some evidence that giants may have lived alongside dinosaurs. For example, this human footprint left next to that of a dinosaur, they're roughly the same age. However, this can't be the case if you believe accepted history. But if you believe the alternative theory that there was a race of giants on the planet a long time ago, the finding makes sense. Here comes another footprint. It was discovered in Syria and determined to be 70 million years old. Yes, there's a problem with the toes here. For some reason, they're all the same. There's also a problem with flat feet. Anyway, it's impossible to say that this footprint belongs to a dinosaur. It's clearly human. Supporters of the theory of giants went even further and suggested that the giants did not only live at the same time with dinosaurs, but also successfully coexisted with them, to such an extent that people of that time could almost domesticate some dinosaurs. Among other things, this could be indicated by the Ica Stones, an interesting series of artifacts with unusual images. They still stump scientists. Researchers cannot understand who exactly left these ancient artifacts, depicting dinosaurs with great accuracy. According to theorists, the authors of artifacts could be the giants themselves. One of the stones even depicts a giant man saddling a dinosaur. Many see this as proof that the giants confidently coped with dinosaurs, tamed them, and used the strength and skills of these reptiles. Let's say even so. Let's say the giants existed a long time ago and managed to survive almost to our time, leaving behind only huge bones and a few mysterious stones. But what about other artifacts? There are some. Weapons, for example. You can find quite a few photos from the late 19th, early 20th century of people holding simple, gigantic guns, or rather trying to hold them. They're bigger than they are. Experts in history will now say that these are duck guns also known as punt guns. According to the official version, these guns were popular in the 19th century. They were usually put on boats and they allowed to hit several birds with one shot. But there's a theory that this is all just a cover for these findings. Theorists believe these are the guns of giants. At the very least, that's what the buttstock suggests. It's known that you need to hold onto so there's no recoil and all that. But it makes no sense to hold such a gigantic gun on weight. An ordinary person cannot hold it at all. The trigger also seems inadequate. It's known that it's pressed with a finger. However, it's almost physically impossible in the case of a rifle. The trigger on such a giant gun can be pulled with only a few fingers or with the whole palm of your hand. But if you're a giant under 16 feet tall, one finger's enough. Cold weapons are also ripe with issues. For example, this is the Sword of Big Pierre. 
it's seven feet long. It weighs a little, 14 pounds, so you can swing it, but only in theory. After all, it's completely useless in a battle. The length of a classic two-handed sword is much smaller. Only a titan could fight with such a giant sword. That's what they say it was. Big Pierre, whom the sword belonged to, was about seven foot two inches tall. Quite a giant, but even so, the sword would have been too huge for him. There's another sword, the Japanese Noromitsu Odashi. This finding is even more epic. It's about 13 feet long, and it weighs 33 pounds. In fact, Japanese Odachi swords were long in principle, but even then they rarely exceeded 6 feet in length. This one is 13 feet long. It's impossible to fight with such a sword, unless you're a giant about 20 to 22 feet tall. There are other swords that are astonishing in size. These, for example. No matter how strong you are, you can't fight with a sword like this. Even if you pick it up, you'll not be able to defend yourself effectively. The enemy will easily stab you with an ordinary sword. In addition, scientists have found huge armor of knights under 9 foot 10 inches tall. This only confuses things more. Scientists exhibit these weapons and armor in museums around the world and say that such giant exhibits performed ceremonial functions and in general were for beauty and status, not for fighting. But what if all this is wrong? Huge bones, many photos of real giants, colossal footprints, abnormally large guns and swords. Too many coincidences, don't you think? And there are several other arguments in favor of the fact that there was a real race of giants on Earth. It died out recently. Who knows, maybe modern giants like tall basketball players and record-breaking tall people are their distant descendants. Apparently, we'll never know, as well as what happened to the giants of the past as why they died out as if at once. It's this 29-year-old guy from Ghana, Africa. His name is Sulemana Abdul Samed, and in early 2023, he claimed to be the tallest person in the world. Sulemana said that he is 9.4 feet tall. Sounds incredible. Yes, and when you look at this giant, you can even partially believe it. But still, the calculations were wrong. It turned out that in the village where Sulaimana lives, there were no normal measuring instruments, so the big guy's height was measured with a stick or a pole. A little later, with the help of suitable instruments, it turned out that Sulaimana's height is 7.8 feet. That's much less than originally announced, but he's still huge. This is one of the most gigantic people in the world right now. By the way, the official record holder is much taller than Sulaimana, but you'll see him later. As for this giant from Ghana, as is often the case, the whole reason is gigantism, which he was diagnosed with a few years ago. Interestingly, he began to grow rapidly at the age of 22, when people usually stop growing. One morning, he woke up to the fact that his tongue had swallowed in his mouth to the point where he couldn't breathe properly. Soon, Suleiman's other body parts began to enlarge. He had outgrown many of the houses in his village and now has to wear special shoes made for him by cobblers from automobile covers. Although it's become more difficult for Suleiman to do everyday things after he started to turn into a giant, he's not particularly worried. He wanted to become the new official world record holder in terms of height. As the giant says, he's still growing, so it's possible. There's another giant in Africa right now, and he's much taller than Sulaimana. 8.5 feet is exactly how tall Julius Charles from Tanzania is said to be. But many people are sure that this number is very high, and he's actually about 7.2 feet tall. Moreover, Julius has always been big, and interestingly, this is not caused by any diseases, according to the giant himself. He was born weighing about 20 pounds, Already at the age of 10, he was taller than his parents, who unsuccessfully tried to stop his abnormal growth, and a few years later, he was forced to drop out of school. Not because he found it difficult to study because of his height, he was simply fed up with the constant taunts and jeers of his peers. They must have told a lot of jokes about basketball. We all know this trivial banter about tall people. And interestingly, Julius associated himself with basketball. With such an abnormal height, it's quite possible to build a successful career in basketball. He even managed to move to America to find his success there. There are many abnormal people in Africa, but for some reason the number of such people is simply exorbitant elsewhere, in India. People with strange limbs and rare developmental peculiarities are regularly born in this country, and giants are also born here. In 1983, for example, Dharmendra Pratap Singh was born here. Already in his childhood, doctors discovered deviations and anomalies in his development. He suffered from acromegaly, roughly speaking, from enlarged body parts. 
In general, it can be treated, but Darmendra was born into a far from wealthy family, so his parents could do nothing about it. They just had to watch their son grow like a weed, turning into a giant. Eventually, he grew up to be eight feet tall. The gigantic height caused complications. The Indian has constant headaches, back pain, as well as problems with eyesight. The tallest Indian received a science degree in literature and also went to work in the circus, where he attracts a lot of attention. And not so long ago, he got into politics and started canvassing people to vote for one of the local parties. Who knows? Maybe he'll build a successful career in politics in the future. There's no doubt about Singh's national record. He's officially considered the tallest man in India, and he's held this record for more than 15 years. He was officially measured, everything's clear, and there are no questions. But as I said before, there are plenty of unofficial giants in the world. Here's one of them. It was filmed in Indonesia, in one of the grocery stores. Apparently, he was filmed with a hidden camera so as not to spook the big guy. It's not known who he is, what his name is, and so on, but they say his height can reach 8.8 .8 feet. Do you think that's possible? Does this big guy look to be that tall, or is he smaller? I think it's already obvious that many giant people are still alive and that there are quite a few of them. And that doesn't just apply to adults. Some of you might think that in the 21st century, giants are no longer born. Not at all. And Olivier Brew proves it perfectly. Look at this guy. He's only 17 years old, but he's already seven and a half feet tall. Last year, the big guy was 7.4 feet. This is only the beginning. Given that the young man's body is still developing, he may well grow up to be 8.2 feet tall and become the absolute official record holder of all time. Canadian Olivier Rue is the tallest teenager at the moment, and apparently he's one of the tallest basketball players of all time. The guy is very lucky with genetics. His father is a former volleyball player with a height of 6.6 .6 feet, and his mother's height is 6 feet. And it's not surprising that already in kindergarten, Olivier was 5.1 feet tall. Although, who am I kidding? It's very surprising and simply unbelievable. When he was 12, he had already surpassed the 6.9 feet mark and easily threw balls into the basket. Same thing's happening now. Olivier doesn't even have to jump high. He can easily put the ball in the basket from above and no one can stop him. Olivier is making great strides in high school basketball and he's already being watched by the NBA. With such abilities, he could easily become a star in the world of basketball. And in general, he's already a celebrity in sports. For example, he's already managed to hang out at the training base of Real Madrid. Very tall people are certainly epic. But giants are not only those people who are tall, but also those who are very heavy. I suggest we take a look at some of these people. Well, since I was talking about a teenager, why not take a look at the child who's considered the fattest in recent years and even in history? That title goes to Indonesian Arya Pramana. Actually, he looks different now. You'll see it later and your jaw will drop. But about eight years ago, he looked like this, 423 pounds. That's exactly the insane weight Arya had at the age of 10. Remember yourself at the age of 10 and realize how much it is. Arya was a real giant. And this is not because of some disease or anomaly, but just because of a diet. Arya ate instant noodles, a lot of fried chicken, and drank gallons of sweet soda every day. He could easily eat 10 plates of food a day. And as Arya's parents admit, it was largely their fault. They simply didn't keep track of their son didn't deny him anything and spoil him a lot. As a result, Arya began to have incredible health problems. He began to have shortness of breath after only 16 feet of walking, and he could not physically take a shower. He had to swim in the pool outside. Fortunately, the story has a good ending. The guy underwent surgery to reduce his stomach and was put on a strict diet of fish, vegetables, and fruit. Very quickly, the weight went down, and now Arya is unrecognizable. Once the fattest kid on the planet looks great, trains a lot, and from food, now he prefers the same fish, vegetables, and fruit that literally saved him from death a few years ago. So what about the adults? Which one would you say is the heaviest? There's a long list to choose from, but I'd settle on Kenneth Brumley, a man who's considered one of the biggest and heaviest in modern history. At his peak, he weighed 1,032 pounds. What do you have to do to gain that kind of weight? Well, in general, nothing. You need to literally completely deprive yourself of physical activity and pig out on junk food. And pig out is still an understatement. This information is shocking, but at the peak of his weight, Brumley consumed 30,000 calories. Not in a week, in a day. Even in terms of junk and sweet food, this is monstrously huge amount of food. And in fact, it was like this. 
Kenneth ate almost nonstop. He lost control of himself and trapped himself. He couldn't get out of his bed on his own, was trapped in his own house, and couldn't do anything at all. To save Brumley, he had to be pulled out by firefighters, who had previously destroyed the wall, because it was impossible to get Kenneth out through an ordinary door. Doctors performed surgery on him, removed fatty outgrowths on his legs, and put him on a very strict diet of 1,200 calories per day. It helped. He lost weight, but it's not known what happened next. To say that Kenneth is still alive, some people say that he's returned to his old way of life, which means that he's still the heaviest person on the planet. But this is not certain. After surgery, dieting, and help from doctors, he stopped contacting. So there's a possibility that he continued to lead such a harmful lifestyle, which eventually killed him. But there's no doubt about the history of this man. Jason Holton is another giant and a man with an insane amount of excess weight. He's called the heaviest Briton. Now his weight's about 660 pounds. Jason has been consuming 10,000 calories a day for years. For breakfast, he would eat several packs of chips, kebab, and curry, and wash it all down with at least five liters of juice or sweet soda. As a snack, he would eat a huge donor kebab and drink 15 cans of soda or energy drink. Eventually, he gained several hundred kilos and things got so bad that the British man began to have organ failure. In 2021, he had to be rescued from his own home for emergency transportation to the hospital. To do this, firefighters and rescue workers pulled him out of his bedroom window with the help of a reinforced truck crane. According to the giant's recollection, it was the worst moment of his life. He was ashamed that a crowd of people were looking at him at that moment. In the hospital, he lost weight, but very little, only about 29 pounds. When he was examined, it turned out that the usual instruments and equipment were not suitable. Jason was too huge for them. To get an x-ray, he was taken to the zoo and x-rayed with a machine that's usually used to diagnose large animals. When the treatment was over and the big guy's health improved a bit, he was moved to a specially equipped dwelling, and there the Briton had a breakdown. He went back to his old ways, started swearing at the people who look after him for not giving him soda, and demanding miracle injections for weight loss. Some people think that only injections will save the British, but personally I find this hard to believe. Big height check. Big weight, check. What else makes giants stand out? How about huge feet? After all, it's known that in recent years and decades, scientists around the world have been finding mysterious giant footprints that only giants could leave. The footprints are found in rock formations, on cliffs, and so on. They all suggest that giants have lived before. But there are similar giants right now. For example, Jason Rodriguez Hernandez from Venezuela the man with the biggest and longest feet on the planet. For example, at the age of 10, he already had size 7 feet, which is a lot for a child. But then, in just a year, it increased to size 13. And now this giant shoe size is 26. His feet are about 16 inches long. The height of the Venezuelan is impressive as well. It's about 7.2 feet. In short, he's a giant in every aspect. If he had lived many, many years ago, then perhaps it's his footprints that will be studied by archaeologists, wondering how such a thing is even real. Although Jason is a certified record holder, and this has made him world famous, there is little to like about this particular feature. It's impossible to find such a shoe size in any store in the world, so Jason is forced to get shoes only on order. Among women, there are also owners of record-breaking feet. Tanya Herbert from the USA stands out the most. Her height is 6.7 feet. By the way, this is not much less than the tallest living woman. We'll see her too. As for her feet, they're about 13 inches long, and her shoe size is 18. Tanya has it easier than Jason. Shoes of this size are sold, but they're almost impossible to see in women's departments. So, as the record breaker says, she has to wear men's shoes all her life. She's therefore working to get shoe companies to start developing larger than usual women's shoes not only for her, but also for other women with similar body features. But let's get back to height. The next guest in our episode is Zia Rashid. This Pakistani giant is 8 feet tall. He was just a little short of becoming officially the tallest man on the planet. As it often happens in such cases, everything started in his childhood. At the age of 10, the guy suddenly began to grow intensely. A year later, he outgrew all members of his family and eventually turned into a giant with all that implies. For example, Zia has to get clothes and shoes on order, and he can't ride on buses. He can fit neither sitting nor standing. On top of that, he has no job. 
But what saddens him the most is that he can't find a soulmate. His dream is to meet a girl of very tall stature so that she would be about the same height as him. But it's impossible. Why? Because right now, the height of the tallest girl on the planet is seven feet. This is a lot, but you have to admit that compared to the Pakistani giant, even this figure looks modest. This is the height of Rumeza Gelji from Turkey, carrier of the rare Weaver syndrome, the very syndrome that caused Rumeza to grow very quickly. And not only grow, the syndrome has also affected the girl's voice. It's very deep and low. In addition, unlike other giants, she's almost unable to move independently either in a wheelchair or on a walker. And in general, she has enough difficulties in her life, but she does not despair. She's learned to live with her feature, she managed to study to become a lawyer, and Rumeza is also qualified as a front-end web developer, which is cool. And finally, a man who I have already mentioned several times today, the tallest man in the world according to official data. The main giant of the planet is Sultan Kosin, who is also from Turkey. His height is 8.2 feet, and in this case, everything is reliably confirmed without any measurements using sticks and poles. Like Rumeza Galji, he finds it difficult to move around on his own, so he always has a cane at hand. Of course, with his height, Sultan has a lot of everyday problems. After what you've seen today, I think you understand the difficulties he has to face. But he accepts himself, he travels a lot, and wherever he finds himself, he amazes everyone with his height. Because the Turkish giant towers over absolutely every person in the world. Although, who knows, maybe very soon, the official record holder will be replaced. It seems that all the prerequisites for this are there. Let's not dwell only on gigantism, because there are other unique people. You can definitely say that about this woman. First of all, she lived to be 100 years old, and that already deserves respect. And secondly, the grandmother has strange horns on her forehead. Curiously enough, the woman herself refuses to remove them. She seems to be a fan of symmetry, because on the opposite side, she also has a similar spot, and a new horn will probably form soon. Next, we have a young girl from the United States, who at 19 years of age was already 6.8 feet tall. It's immediately apparent that most of her body is taken up by her legs, each of which is about 4.4 feet long. The girl has both advantages and disadvantages. For example, it's difficult for her to choose appropriate clothing and also not very comfortable to ride in cars. However, as soon as she finds herself on the school volleyball court, everything changes and her legs are already playing to her advantage. Would you like to be that tall? Write in the comments. Have you ever heard of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? If you don't know, this disease suppresses the body's ability to produce collagen, which causes the skin to lose firmness and elasticity, resulting in premature wrinkles. That's exactly the kind of disorder that befell this girl. Because of this diagnosis, from the outside, the girl can be confused with a grandmother because her skin resembles the one people have after losing extreme weight. Nevertheless, the girl's not discouraged and even takes pictures for magazines, as well as has her own personal blog. The Rarest of Rare One of these diseases befell our next protagonist in her early childhood. I'm talking about cherubism a genetic tissue disorder that leads to a deformity of the jaw. There are only a few hundred people in the world with this condition. Vitiligo. That's the name of the condition this guy suffers from. It has to do with skin pigmentation, but I think you get the idea by now. His name is Bashir Aziz, and he said that as a boy and as a teenager, he was constantly bullied by his classmates and other people in general. This gave him a lot of complexes. Nevertheless, he later became a full-fledged model, and when he found out that a couple of spots had shrunk in size, he panicked. His view had changed so much that now he's not a white crow in a bad way, but a real individual and a unique person to whom everyone pays attention. Beard Hearing these words, our next protagonist will smile or even just laugh because not every man has such thick hair like her. The girl's name is Rose Guile, and she hails from Oregon. Since her teenage years, the girl began to worry about facial hair. She didn't pay much attention to it at first, but when she had to shave several times a day, she got worried. There was nothing that could be done. None of the methods the doctors had suggested worked. Today, she's stopped shaving her beard and is posting pictures of herself on social media. Are freckles a bad thing? Ralph Souffrant spent his entire childhood pondering this question. Not only does he have freckles all over his face, but all over his body as well. And he's not going to do anything about it. On the contrary, he likes such a difference from the others, and he calls his body a work of art. 
The guy went into modeling and even performed in a Kanye West fashion show. On the same day, Ralph signed a full-fledged contract. A girl named Cassandra Noud has a black birthmark under her eye. Although as a child the girl begged her parents to allow her to have an operation to remove it, now she refuses this idea. Now the girl says she appreciates her uniqueness because it helps her stand out among others and gives her personality. Eyes out I had something similar when I saw that this woman could literally pop her eyes out of her eye sockets. Her name's Kim Goodman, and what she's doing just blows my mind. It immediately reminds me of cartoons where the characters have their eyes popping out of their sockets. Not surprisingly, Kim quickly got noticed and made quite popular, even making it into the Guinness Book of World Records. According to the woman herself, it doesn't hurt to do it at all. In addition, she has perfect vision. Next, I'll show you people who amaze the world with their incredible abilities, skills, and talents. Watch carefully so you don't miss a thing. Have you watched Spider-Man movies? Remember Oscorp and company employee Max Dillon? Yeah, the one who mutated and turned into a living blob of electricity? Well, Electro pale in comparison with that 16-year-old kid. He's able to conduct 11,000 volts through his body and not react to it at all. Just so you understand, there are documented cases in the world where a person has been electrocuted by a 4-volt shock. And now remember how much our real superhero can withstand. Natasha Demkina that's the name of a girl from Saransk, Russia, who is now over 30 years old. When she was young, she discovered an unusual ability in herself. The girl could see other people's organs. She scanned them just like an x-ray for which she got a nickname. If you believe the media, her diagnoses were often more accurate than those made by doctors with medical equipment. However, during an experiment on the Discovery Channel in 2004, she failed to confirm her abilities. According to Natasha, she was put in predetermined unfavorable conditions. It's up to you whether you believe in her gift or not. I've never understood people who are okay with the cold weather. No, I don't mean the usual breeze. I mean sub-zero temperatures in which people run marathons, swim under icy water, and do other crazy things. By the way, I just described the activities of this sub-zero named Wim Hof. I am the Iceman! In 2000, he swam about 200 feet under the water of an ice-covered lake, and a few years later in Finland, beyond the Arctic Circle, he ran a full marathon in negative 4 degree Fahrenheit weather, wearing only shorts. In 2009, he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in two days, but here, of course, he cheated. He wore shoes. Do you think we can give him credit for such an achievement? Or could this sub-zero of our world have conquered the volcano without shoes? Forgot Compass at Home that's the situation the girl in this video got herself into some time ago. At least, I think so. The teacher must have yelled at her so hard that the girl had no choice but to learn how to draw a circle without the help of compasses. And here she is making the smoothest circle imaginable. This may not be the most popular method of climbing, but it works nonetheless. The guy grabbed the pole with both hands and with the help of powerful pushes climbed up. From the outside, it looks so easy. As if right now anyone could go and do the same thing. There, the guys at the bus stop were smiling and probably thinking the same thing. But I'm sure none of them are capable of doing such cool stunts. If the previous athlete could climb the pole in the most original way, this one shows that he only needs two fingers on one hand and two on the other to lift his body and still be able to stand. Many people don't have that much strength in a whole hand, and this guy only needs two fingers. It's just unbelievable. If at the moment when this video is being recorded, I was somewhere to the side, not as close as the camera, I might have thought that in front of me was not a person but some kind of huge whirly gig toy. How does he manage to bounce like that and keep a perfectly even, precise trajectory? Maybe you know the secret. Velcro on the legs this man definitely has something like that, because it remains a mystery to me how he ran like that and literally stuck to the flagpole in one swoop. Aside, of course, there are no fixers or Velcro, it's pure skill, very strong legs, and months or even years of training. Hit the like button if you'd like to be able to do something like that too. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel like there's something wrong with your pants? As if paint could get on them? They were torn, worn incorrectly, or something like that? Well, this guy doesn't need anybody's help, not even the help of a mirror. He can put his body under his feet and see for himself. How does his back not hurt after all that? 
playing cards can also be useful. This was proved by a guy who's been doing card tricks for years. He, like the rest of us, was probably inspired by the movie Now You See Me and decided to learn some good tricks. Well, he succeeded. With a simple card, he can light a match, just imagine with what force you need to throw it, and how to hit it perfectly so that everything works out. Many of us have problems with banal redrawing an image from a ready-made picture, let alone drawing something new from scratch. However, this isn't the case for the next protagonist of this episode. He didn't just draw a beautiful picture, he made three images at once at one time. I have no idea how he did it, but it's pretty cool. There's another incredible artist in the world. If you've never heard of invisible painting, this video will surprise you. Just imagine your face if you were walking through the woods in the middle of the night and happened to see this. I'm sure many impressionable people would be immediately frightened, but in daylight, almost everyone would want to take a picture with such beauty. Kudos to the author. Dancing in the Sky If there were such a style, this girl could certainly become a champion, because what she shows in the sky is really amazing. It feels as if she's spinning on the ground, and the flight effect was added by experienced editors. She makes everything so easy and effortless. This man's had a passion for food since early childhood. And no, it wasn't a passion for the usual candy, marshmallows, chocolates and stuff. He always wanted to taste, well, glass, and then metal, and light bulbs, and things like that. Of course, a normal person would have died a long time ago from such a diet, but not this unique glutton. His coolest achievement was eating an entire Cessna 150 airplane. Tran Van Hay in 1931, Tran Van Hay was born in Vietnam. Most likely, this man would have remained an unknown man if one day he didn't make the decision to stop cutting and brushing his hair. Thanks to this strange decision, he became famous throughout the world. Tran began growing his hair at the age of about 30 and didn't stop doing it until his death. For the last 50 years of his life, he never cut his hair. He also never brushed his hair, but he did wash it once in a while. However, he wasn't really into it. Tran soaked his hair just a couple of times a year to freshen it up a bit. As a result, he grew a lock of hair more than 20 feet long and weighing more than 22 pounds. As you can see from the pictures, Tran's hair didn't look like a wig or a braid, rather a huge snake like an anaconda or a python. To keep his hair from getting tangled under his feet, the Vietnamese used to wrap it around his head, and the result was a natural turban. Not surprisingly, Hay's hair was mostly brown at the ends and gray only at the base, because he stopped cutting it when he was a young man and had not yet had time to gray. It's also interesting that nature was very generous to the unusual Vietnamese. He didn't go bald one bit, and his hair grew until his death in 2010. For such an unusual appearance, Tran might well have qualified for the Guinness Book of World Records, but he didn't want to apply. Sakal Devtuti Next up is another lover of long hair. 66-year-old Sakal Dev Tuti from the Indian state of Bihar has also given up cutting hair. Sakal has not visited his barber in about 45 years. The reason for this brave decision is believed to be a dream Sakal had long ago. One night, while he was sleeping, his hair was pulled into one big dreadlock. And that same night, a deity appeared to him in a dream and forbade him to cut or brush his hair. Sakal took this as a divine blessing and woke up determined never to cut or brush his hair again. Plus, unlike Tran Van Hay, he completely renounced washing his hair. And to finally enter the new life, the Indian also gave up bad habits. In 45 years, the Indian's hair has grown by almost six and a half feet. Like for Tran Van Hay, it's not easy for Sakal with this weight on his head. Normally, he just drags this huge dreadlock behind him. But if he has to go somewhere, Sakal usually braids the dreadlock into a kind of a very strange ponytail, which looks more like a carpet on his head. Interestingly, this uncomfortable head of hair has not prevented Sakal from working for over 30 years in the forestry department, and the Indian record holder is now known as a healer in his village. Sakal helps locals treat infertility with special medicines and potions that he prepares in his home. J. A young guy from Britain named Jay looks quite ordinary. Unlike Sakal or Tran Van Hay, there's no way to tell what's wrong with him. But that's until he opens his mouth. For more than 20 years, Jay has not brushed, flossed, or rinsed his teeth and generally had no regard for oral hygiene. This was largely the fault of the boy's parents, who were not particularly interested in their son's health. As the years went by, lack of hygiene began to ruin Jay's teeth and make his mouth a real hell. 
But Jay wasn't about to brush or go to the dentist. He was too afraid of dentists. Fortunately, everything came to an end. A few years ago, Jay visited the clinic and the dentist really got to work on his decaying teeth. They removed nearly half of his teeth, replaced them with implants, and destroyed the dental scale. Look at how the guy transformed after that. Now Jay can smile without fear of showing his teeth. He became friends with hygiene, too, and now brushes and flosses his teeth regularly. Amal Haji The next person from this episode, Amal Haji, like the Briton Jay, also didn't brush his teeth for a long time. But in addition to that, he didn't wash for a long time. How long? More than 67 years. This resident of Iran is a local celebrity. Amal has been dubbed the dirtiest man on the planet, and you can readily believe it. The Iranian abandoned all hygiene procedures when he was young because of emotional setbacks and psychological trauma. Over time, the problems drove him to the point where Amal became panic-stricken with fear of water. He was sure he'd get sick, die, or become even more miserable as soon as he touched water. But that wasn't all. Amal is also a real tramp. He now lives in a small hut, but for a long time he lived in a kind of dugout. In warm weather, Amal lies on the ground and smokes. Sometimes he smokes regular cigarettes, and sometimes he smokes a pipe filled with the products of animal life. As if this abomination weren't enough, the Iranian also eats raw or rotten meat and drinks rainwater, which he collects in a dirty oil tank. Fresh food and water are not consumed by the tramp as a matter of principle, although sometimes he is fed by the locals. What's funny and strange with all his lifestyle, Amal takes care of himself. He often admires himself in a small mirror and trims his hairstyle when his hair grows too much. For this, he simply sets fire to part of the hair. Amao is also actively searching for a better half and hopes to find a significant other. But what's even more surprising is the health of the Iranian. Despite the fact that he literally lives in dirt, eats whatever he can and doesn't practice proper hygiene, Amao has no serious diseases or even parasites. What is it, incredible luck or perfect genetics? Why do you think Amal Haji manages to stay healthy? Share your thoughts in the comments and stay tuned to see some more extremely unusual people. Shridhar Shalal We usually cut our nails as they grow. Some do it every few days, some do it a couple of times a month, and some don't do it themselves at all and visit the nail salon regularly. How much would the procedure cost if Shridhar Shalal were to come to the salon? Have a look at this Indian's left hand. This is what it would look like if you didn't cut your nails for decades. In 1952, when Shridhar was still in school and sitting in class, the teacher admonished him for a broken long fingernail on his hand. This triggered the boy, and he decided to forget about scissors and a fingernail file. The next time he cut his nails wasn't until 2018, 66 years later, when he was already an old man. During that time, his nails had grown a total of 358.1 inches in length, meaning that the nail on each finger was about six and a half feet long. How do you like that? Not surprisingly, the usual tools were not able to manage. Indian manicure was done with a saw. Now his nails are on public display in a museum in New York's Times Square, and Shridhar Shalal's name is in the Guinness Book of Records. By the way, Shridhar could have grown even longer nails, but at some point they began to interfere with his sleep. And besides, he couldn't find a job with this feature. How long have you ever been awake? Do you have your own record? Maybe one day? Maybe a couple of days? Or have you managed to stay awake for about a week? My record's a couple of days without sleep. Even though it's not healthy, a week without sleep is a hefty record. But not for Thai Nhok, a Vietnamese who never sleeps at all. <laughs> Literally. But it wasn't always like this. The last time Ty slept in 1973, in the same year he suffered a terrible fever which left him with an unpleasant complication. The Vietnamese man permanently lost sleep. And it's not just insomnia or anything else, Nhoc really doesn't sleep. No matter how hard he tried to wear himself out, no matter what decoctions he took, no matter how many sleeping pills he drank, and no matter how much he cheated nature, he could no longer physically fall asleep. It's known that chronic lack of sleep has a very bad effect on health. A person begins to get sick often, feeling constantly tired, lethargic, and irritable. Surprisingly, Nyok was relatively okay. He felt fine for the first decades and only about 15 years ago began to experience the consequences of a life without sleep. According to the Vietnamese man, sometimes he feels like a plant that's not being watered. Since Thai doesn't need to sleep, he takes advantage of his unique superpower and works two jobs. He farms during the day and works as the farm caretaker at night. 
Scientists are amazed by the phenomenon of the Vietnamese man. They examined him and concluded that despite his lack of sleep, Thai is almost completely healthy, except for a slight decrease in liver function. Thai Nhoc hasn't slept since he was about 30, and Han Langseth stopped shaving his beard since he was 30. He didn't shave until his death at the age of 81. At that time, in 1927, Hans Langseth was the owner of the longest beard in history. Over a period of 61 years, Hans had grown an incredible beard which was almost 18 feet long. It's now housed in the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. The beard was found in the attic of a North Dakota estate. It's thought to have been deposited there by one of Hans' sons who cut the beard off the deceased man's face after his father's death. Hans was known to have been a farmer for most of his life, but he was also adventurous. There was a period when he traveled with a traveling circus in which he became famous with his beard. He showed his record-breaking beard to the public, but very soon, tired of this kind of performance, the audience didn't believe in such a length and tried to constantly check it by pulling the Norwegian by the hair. The man didn't shave for a long time. Check. People who didn't wash for a long time or cut their hair or nails. Check. Who else can I tell you about? How about the person who didn't leave the house for decades? Nadezhda Bushayeva became famous a couple of years ago on the internet when users learned about her story. The resident of a village in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, had spent 26 years in captivity, but not willingly. As it turned out, her own mother wouldn't let her out of the house. She wanted to protect Nadezhda from dangers from outside, so she left home for the last time in eighth grade and came out again when she was 42 years old. Besides her mother, Nadezhda's neighbors were rats and cats. Speaking of cats, Nadezhda had to eat cat food and rotten milk while living in a house without electricity and water. As a result, when volunteers and reporters found out about her story and came to see her, they saw a woman whose hair was in a huge tangle, her clothes were worn out, and her face was emaciated and filthy. It's horrible even to imagine how the woman managed to survive in such terrible conditions. But the main thing is that this story ended well. Soon, Nadezhda was rescued from her imprisonment and restored to health. For all the time of existence of the circus, a huge number of unusual people have performed on the stages of different cities and countries. Giants have been valued quite a lot in such shows in the past. According to rumors, this is one of them, one of the largest, heaviest, and tallest circus performers in history. It's hard to say if this is really the case, but it's possible that it's true. Firstly, in the past, huge giants often remained undocumented. And secondly, history knows other unusual circus performers whose existence is hard to believe. Among them were documented and absolutely genuine giants like Edouard Bupre. This Canadian was born at the end of the 19th century and from a young age began to surprise everyone with his size. He grew literally by days and hours. Already at the age of nine, his height reached six feet, and when Edouard was 12, he exceeded the mark of six and a half feet. Soon, Edouard reached a mark of seven feet dropped out of school, went to work on a ranch, but quit his job and started working in the circus. By then, the giant's height reached 8.2 feet. Thus, Edouard was as tall as the current world record holder, Sultan Kosin. He weighed a lot too, 375 pounds. Bupre signed a contract with the Barnum & Bailey Circus, one of the most famous in history, and began touring, surprising audiences not only with his size but also with his abilities. It's said that he easily bent iron bars and lifted horses on his shoulders. In addition, the Canadian participated in wrestling matches against the strongest men of his time, as it usually happens in the case of giants. Bupre's health was not the best, and at the age of 23, the circus performer was gone. There are complete opposites to such huge strongmen. Isaac Sprague, for example. Look at him. This circus performer looked like a skeleton. In fact, he even went by the name of Living Human Skeleton. What's interesting, Isaac was born quite ordinary and normal. But at 12, something happened, and he began to lose weight. At the same time, Isaac's appetite remained good, but the weight continued to decrease rapidly, and Sprague became a living skeleton. At the age of 44, this man with a height of 5.5 feet weighed only 44 pounds. This was not a healthy condition, and to cope with it, Isaac carried a flask of sweet 
milk everywhere he went, constantly feeding himself to not pass out. Medical professionals described his condition as extreme progressive muscular dystrophy. Initially, Isaac never considered a circus career working elsewhere. But after the death of his parents, Sprague could no longer provide for himself and found himself unemployed. Fortunately for him, in 1865, he was sent an invitation to join the circus. A year later, Isaac was hired by the Barnum & Bailey Circus to work at their American Museum. People went there in droves to see the walking skeleton. Although Isaac was popular with the public, he disliked circus life and sought work elsewhere several times, but his health was deteriorating. His already poor condition was exacerbated by gambling addiction and the living skeleton's debts. It's not known when and how exactly Sprague died, but before his death, he bequeathed his body to science so that scientists could find out what was the reason for his thinness. However, it's also unknown whether or not his body was received by scientists. But this artist looks quite normal. There's no thinness or gigantism, on the contrary. But that's if you look at him only from the waist up. If you look below, it becomes clear what Johnny Eck was unusual for. This American circus performer was born with an underdeveloped lower body. He had legs, but they were very weak, in the initial stages of development, and small, so he had to hide them under his clothes. In general, the case of Johnny Eck is unique. Not only he performed in the circus, but also played musical instruments, photographed, raced, ran a business, and painted. He also lived for 79 years, despite his peculiarity. But still, he's remembered as a circus performer. Johnny quickly learned to walk on his hands faster than ordinary children learn to walk on their feet. At the age of 12, Eck began his career as a performer, presenting himself as a man without the lower half of his body. The artist without the half of his body performed in a tuxedo, demonstrated a stand on one arm, climbed ladders, participated in setting up magic tricks. In general, he always had something to surprise the audience. When such circuses ceased to be very popular, Johnny and his brother Robert, who performed with him, returned to normal life and managed to achieve a lot. I'm sure you've probably seen this man at least once. Schlitzy is probably the most famous circus performer of all time. It's all about his appearance. The boy was born with microcephaly. It made his brain small and his head too big. In addition, Schlitzy suffered from myopia and severe mental retardation, and his height was only four feet. It's believed that the artist's intelligence remained at the level of a three-year-old child. Schlitzy was unable to take care of himself, and in conversation he could only use simple words and a couple of phrases. At the same time, he performed the required actions, clearly understood what was said to him, and was an excellent imitator. This led to the fact that he became very popular in the circus. His parents sold him to the circus, by the way. It sounds crazy, but in the early 20th century, this this was common. The guardians of the guy were his employers, which Schlitzy changed a lot in his life. In circus and other performances, Schlitzy was introduced as the last of the Aztecs, the monkey girl, or simply, what is it? Schlitzy often performed in women's clothing to make his image even more vivid and memorable. All of this together made him very popular. He was a circus performer in the 1920s and 1930s. Even when Schlitzy left the big stage, he continued to perform on the streets, in small shows and performances. No matter how you look at it, in the late 19th and early 20th century, people were more attracted to artists with unusual appearance rather than to those who were notable for their abilities and skills, which is why Schlitzy became so popular. The same story happened with Ella Harper. The girl was born with a pathology called knee hyperextension. In simple words, it's when the knees are turned backwards. People with this condition have to walk only on all fours. At the end of the 19th century, all roads to the circus were open to people with this peculiarity, and Ella went to perform there. She was nicknamed the Camel Girl. There's no insult here, it was not considered offensive even at that time. In advertisements and announcements of performances, Ella was described as a beautiful and attractive young lady who had body parts and gait resembling a camel and it aroused the public's interest. It bore fruit. By today's standards, Ella earned about $5,000 a week. It's very good money, isn't it? But at some point, the unusual artist was bored with everything, and even a good fee could not keep her on the stage of circuses. She left the show business and decided to get on with her life. By the way, Ella Harper is not the only famous circus performer with such peculiarity. There was Robert Huddleston, only if Ella was called the Camel Girl, he was called the Pony Boy. 
Unlike Ella, he had not only his knee joints twisted, but also his elbows, which gave him a very unusual appearance. At first, Robert worked on a farm where he became very physically fit, and then moved to the circus, which included other people with all sorts of physical anomalies. At performances, Robert demonstrated marvels of flexibility and stamina. In his performances, Huddleston tried to always be original and funny. He didn't want to be perceived simply as a strange man. The artist invented new tricks, showed complex performances with other artists, and constantly joked with the audience. In short, he combined circus performances and stand-up on one stage. He himself treated his peculiarity absolutely well and never worried about it. Probably this is also why the audience loved him so much. He worked in the circus for almost 40 years and generally lived a long life, despite the anomaly of body development. This man is the first in this episode who outwardly is not distinguished by anything special at all. It looks like an ordinary person, but in fact, it's a unique person. This circus performer has been dubbed the human owl, and you can see why. Martin could actually turn his head 180 degrees to the rear, and he felt no pain at all. Martin's crazy performances are shocking even now. Imagine how shocked audiences were in the first half of the 20th century. In addition, Martin could not just turn his head and look at his back. In this position, he could drink and smoke, but not for too long. With his neck twisted, it became difficult for him to breathe. Just don't try to do it. It's a really death-defying act. The trick's incredible, but only one performance in the circus performer's arsenal is somehow not enough. So, in addition to the ability to turn his head, Martin surprised people with other performances. He was known for teaching various animals to perform acrobatic tricks. One of his famous performances was the one where two cats were made to wear gloves and box each other. He also performed with a dog that he taught to walk only on its hind legs while carrying an umbrella. Once again, we have a man with an unusual appearance. I would say very unusual because he has two heads. The two-headed Mexican was the name of this man, whose real name was Pascal Pinon. The story goes that he was found in Mexico, either in a Native American tribe or in a mine. When the story of Pascal reached the United States, one of the circus workers decided to get him. The locals didn't want to let the two-headed man go, considering him a devil and saying that together with him, the evil would come out but the circus still got the unique person. It all sounds interesting and even creepy. But in fact, it was said about Pascal to advertise his performances. Actually, he was not two-headed at all. The second head on top is just a large tumor. For the performances, it was specially made up. Pascal went out to people and shocked them with his appearance. They were all convinced that there was a second head sticking out of the Mexican's forehead. But apparently, over time, the audience began to guess that they were being deceived. Besides, by then, Pascal had already brought the circus a lot of money, so after several years of touring, he stopped performing, and the director of the circus paid for his surgery to remove the tumor. Today, you've already seen the camel girl, the pony boy, and the human owl. How about to replenish this piggy bank? In front of you is Grady Stiles, the lobster boy from the USA. Look at his hands and arms. They really look like crustacean claws and his feet look very unusual. In general, the nickname suits him well. This appearance is a consequence of electrodactyl, a genetic mutation in which the three middle fingers are missing and the thumb and the pinky form the letter V. It was passed on to him from his father. Grady's son also became a carrier of electrodactyl. Grady's father performed in circuses with eccentric performances all his life and, of course, made his son get into the business. Despite the fact that Styles was popular and earned good money from performances in circuses, and not only, because of his peculiarity, he was forced to live in social isolation and was considered a social outcast, which caused his emotional and psychological problems. At some point, this led to him committing a serious crime. Despite the fact that the court convicted him and he himself pleaded guilty, he was not jailed but given a suspended sentence, all because no prison in the United States was ready to hold a prisoner with such an unusual feature. This was a unique case in the history of the judicial system of the United States. Among circus performers, you can find not only people with unusual appearance or abilities, among them there are even world and historical record holders. For example, Lucia Zarate. She lived in the late 19th century. Lucia was an American sideshow artist of Mexican descent. Do you realize what a world record she set yet? If you're thinking size, you're absolutely right. A 
According to the Guinness Book of World Records, this is the adult with the lightest weight in all documented history. At the age of 17, Lucia weighed only 4.6 pounds. Moreover, the girl's height was only 20 inches. Her shin was only 3.9 inches in circumference. And Lucia herself became the first patient with congenital dwarfism type 2 known to doctors. Scientists believe that Lucia's physical development stopped at the one-year mark. Surprisingly, it had no effect on her mental abilities. Lucia Zarate spoke fluent English and Spanish, performed at fairs, and was popular in the circus. She was so famous that she was even known in other countries. <laughs> That's saying a lot. But the story could not have been all that good. As is often the case with such people, Lucia's life was short. She died at the age of 26. This man also made history as more than just a curious performer. He's considered the first documented person with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Even if this is the first time you've heard of the syndrome, you already know what it is. Yes, it's all about skin that stretches like rubber. In addition, people suffering from the syndrome can suffer from abnormal mobility in the joints, which bend in any direction. But Felix Worley is remembered for his performances with his skin. He could stretch it in absolutely different ways. It stretched to unimaginable size. Of course he was popular in the circus. There he was called the Elastic Skin Man. By the way, in, in our time, there's a famous artist with the same feature, Harry Turner. The Briton amazes with his ability. His skin stretches to almost six inches in length, so he can easily stretch his neck skin over his face, stretch his cheeks to an inconceivable degree, and so on. You can see for yourself. However, he often suffers from painful sensations in his joints, so he pays for such a superpower with his health. It's hard to believe that what Harry Turner is doing is real, that there's no editing, special effects, or the like. Likewise, many will find it hard to believe that this woman was real. It seems like her legs were just enlarged with the help of Photoshop, but that's not the case. This is Fanny Mills, and she's one of the most famous circus performers with Milroy's disease. At first, she was okay, the girl was born normal, but soon the disease began to progress. Lymph was accumulating and stagnating in Fanny's legs, and it was impossible to remove it. As a result, her legs grew to incredible size. Shoes for Fanny were made to order. Three goat skins were required for one pair of shoes. No one could cure such a disease in the 19th century. So Fanny had to just accept it and go to perform to somehow monetize her peculiarity. Being a circus actress, Fanny accumulated a good capital and decided to set for her personal life with its help, but it was unsuccessful. This girl died before reaching the age of 40. Amazing people exist not only in the circus. History knows many incredible cases of people transforming themselves by losing hundreds of kilograms. Stay tuned. John Minnock Looking at pictures and old videos of this man, many think he's just a random man who's overweight. He probably weighs 600, 800, or even 1,000 pounds, right? Wrong. In fact, you see the heaviest man in history, and he weighed much more. Of course, there may have been heavier men in history, but John Brower Minock is officially confirmed. This American, who lived in the last century, weighed 1,400 pounds at his peak. Just imagine how much that is. Is it hard to imagine? Well, that's about the weight of two and a half Harley Davidson motorcycles, or five truck tires, or the weight of eight to ten average people. Minock had had weight problems since childhood. Even then, he suffered from a serious form of obesity. He weighed 291 pounds when he was 12 and 392 pounds when he was 22, and he was six feet tall. When he turned 37, things got so bad that Minock had to be rushed to the medical center. This required the efforts of a dozen firefighters and rescuers, a specially modified stretcher, and even a ferry to transport him. John was put on a very strict diet of 1,200 calories a day, which he kept for 16 months. Like all dieters, the record holder had his relapses. Sometimes he ate again and would gain about 200 pounds in just a week. This, by the way, is the record for the fastest weight gain. In over a year, Minak lost almost 926 pounds, and that too was a record the record for weight loss among men. However, it didn't make much of a difference. His health problems were getting worse, and John passed away at the age of 41. At that time, he weighed 798 pounds, and at the moment of his death, his BMI was 105.3. For comparison, the normal index ranges from 18 to 25.
To lose 926 pounds is incredible, but that's not the limit. Amazingly, one person managed to lose more than half a ton of weight. It's hard to believe, but it's a fact. I'm talking about a resident of Saudi Arabia named Khalin bin Mohsen Shari. Because of health problems in his youth, he began to gain weight rapidly. Khalid was literally growing before people's eyes. About 10 years ago, at his peak, he weighed about 1,345 pounds. Needless to say, Khalid couldn't move and even had trouble breathing. Things got so bad that he had to be hospitalized. An operation was performed, workers removed part of the wall of Khalid's house, used a crane to lift him out of the house, and flew him to a hospital by cargo plane. At the hospital, Khalid was examined and found to have a record-high BMI of 204, almost double that of the heaviest man of all time at the time of his death. At the hospital, Khalid underwent surgery. Doctors removed 176 pounds from his abdomen, and then a long period of recovery, treatment, and dieting began. Incredibly, after only four years, the guy weighed 150 pounds and was unrecognizable. To lose 1,195 pounds in four years is an incredible achievement. This woman could also boast of such achievement. Like the previous people in the episode, Rosalie Bradford was heavy from childhood. Already at the age of 14, she weighed about 220 pounds, and at the age of 15, she weighed 330 pounds. She married, they had a child, and Rosalie began to cook and eat constantly. Her weight continued to increase uncontrollably, as did her appetite. Rosalie tried to keep a diet several times, but to no avail. Things worsened when she was admitted to the hospital, bad rest contributed to her weight gain, and Rosalie became immobile. At her peak, she weighed about 1,190 pounds. Rosalie tried to commit suicide, but luckily she was unsuccessful. Soon, she was contacted by Richard Simmons, a well-known nutritionist. He developed a diet plan and exercise program for her. At first, the whole training consisted of clapping her hands. The woman's body was physically incapable of more. But gradually, Rosalie lost weight. The exercises became more difficult, and after a year, the woman lost almost 419 pounds. Then, she went even further and, with the help of a physiotherapist, lost another 507 pounds. The total weight loss was 917 pounds, which was a world record amongst women. Perhaps these people's stories will motivate some of you to get in shape for the summer, or simply to create the body of your dreams. As you can see, nothing's impossible. Well, I suggest we change the subject a little bit and look at other people who have one thing in common. Unusual weight. Keep watching to see the skinniest people on the planet the woman who aims to set a dangerous and strange world record, and people who weigh less than 15 pounds. Lizzie Velasquez Lizzie Velasquez is one of the most unusual people on the planet. First of all, this woman is a carrier of a very rare disease, weidmann rautenstrauch syndrome. According to scientists, only one or two people in the world have this syndrome. Secondly, many people recognize Lizzie as the thinnest girl in the world. At a height of 4.9 feet, her weight has never exceeded 64 pounds, and now Lizzie weighs about 55 pounds. Needless to say, at that weight, she has literally no body fat. But that's not all. Surprisingly, Lizzie eats a lot more than many of you do. What's more, she eats way more than some bodybuilders who are trying to gain impressive muscle mass. The girl consumes between 5,000 and 8,000 calories a day without gaining any weight at all. Sounds like a dream to many. There's nothing cool about it. Lizzie does it simply not to die. She has such a fast metabolism that she has to eat literally every 15 to 20 minutes. The number of meals a day is about 60. All this is compounded by a very weak immune system, blindness in one eye, aging skin, and other ills. But the record holder is not discouraged. She's learned to live with her feature, has a positive outlook on life, is a blogger, motivator, and writer, and is involved in medical research. With Lizzie's help, scientists can take some areas of science to a whole new level. Tom Stanford The next person of the episode looks like Lizzie. Not in terms of appearance, of course. The fact is that his body has also no fat. Tom Stanford is the skinniest man on the planet. Again, many people would dream of no body fat, cool definition, lean muscle, and so on. But Tom hardly has any interesting definition. He doesn't even have much muscle. The guy looks like a living skeleton, and it's not because he's been overdoing his cutting phase and fat burning, or has anorexia. Tom has an extremely rare genetic mutation. One of his genes is mutated so that fat simply doesn't stay under his skin, no matter how much he eats. Amazingly, blood tests on such a skinny guy show that he's obese. 
All in all, Tom's case is truly unique. Scientists say that only a few people in the world have this feature, but Tom's was much more pronounced than that of others. Among other things, the guy doesn't hear well, he has low testosterone level, he often experiences pain in his legs, and his bones are fragile. Tom has repeatedly suffered fractures and other injuries. What's surprising is that Tom is a professional athlete, he's a cyclist. And despite his feature, he's successful. He competes in Paralympic cycling and has even been the champion in some races. His dream is to compete in the Paralympic Games. Even though he's 33, he may try to qualify for the Games. Jeremy Gillitzer The next person of the episode is different from Tom Staniford or Lizzie Velasquez. Looking at old photos of Jeremy Gillitzer, one doesn't understand why he's even in this video. He's in very good shape, no problems with obesity or thinness. However, at one time, Jeremy was one of the skinniest people in the world. At first, things were going great for him. He was a successful educator and worked in the modeling business. What could go wrong? Jeremy was too demanding of himself. He always felt that he was overweight and that he didn't have the perfect shape. Childhood traumas also played a role in this. As a child, Jeremy was often insulted by his stepfather. As a result, the guy began to lose weight and lose his shape. At first, it was gradual and then abruptly. Accumulated resentment against his stepfather, a bad relationship, his mother's illness, and two consecutive traffic accidents led to the fact that in 2004, the model developed an eating disorder. One thing led to another, and Jeremy became an anorexic. Unlike Lizzie Velasquez, he had no dangerous congenital syndromes, but at his peak, or rather bottom, he weighed almost like her, 66 pounds, at a height of 5.8 feet. Jeremy became the thinnest man on the planet, but not for long. The body couldn't withstand such stress, and at the age of 38, the model died. Some deliberately lose weight, turning themselves into a skeleton, while others deliberately put on weight. Bobby Jo Wesley once had an ordinary figure, but after she became pregnant, she had health problems and began to put on weight rapidly. Instead of undergoing treatment or keeping a diet, Bobby Jo decided to make gaining weight her goal. And no, she's not planning to become the heaviest woman on the planet. She has a slightly different goal. Bonnie Jo wants to become the woman with the widest hips in the world. She wants to break the record of Mikel Rufinelli. So far, this woman has the widest and biggest hips of the planet. They're about 8.2 feet in circumference. Bobby Jo is four inches from the record. To break the record, the woman eats only the most unhealthy and fatty foods possible. For example, she adds a bunch of mayonnaise, bacon, ham, and breadcrumbs to healthy salads or fresh vegetables. And also she eats pork, sausages, cakes, and so on in huge quantities. Wesley walks on thin ice. She already has serious health problems. The woman's joints are severely strained and damaged, and she may lose the ability to walk in the future. But Wesley says she'll try to break the record, even if that lifestyle kills her. Do you think it's worth torturing your body to go down in the Guinness Book of World Records history? Share your thoughts in the comments. And now let's take a look at some insane Guinness World Records caught on camera. Let's do this. Florida resident Ramiro Alanis set a new record for the number of times he's seen the movie. Alanis spent a total of 720 hours or 30 days watching the last Spider-Man movie. The funny thing is that this is nothing new for the man. He's held a similar record before. In 2019, he went to watch Avengers Endgame 191 times. Assemble. No! But outrageous fortune screwed the guy up because some other moviegoer beat him to it after a while. Apparently, Ramiro Alanis was pissed that he wasn't the only one who went to the movie theaters 200 times to see the same movie. So he started 30-day challenge of continuous watching of Spider-Man. By the way, if he went to the movie about 300 times, that means the guy spent a total of about $3,500 on movie tickets. And without straying too far from the subject of tickets, I'll tell you an important point. This incredible record has its own rules. The intrepid viewer must watch the movie from start to finish, including the credits, without being distracted by things like a smartphone or interrupting for a bathroom break. All of this is verified by a surveillance cameras. Also, as proof, the person must show the judges all their tickets. By the way, it wasn't a major Spider-Man fan who stopped watching the movie. The movie was simply withdrawn from distribution. As the guy claims, he's now able to literally quote the entire movie from beginning to end. I think he's even dreaming about this movie now. And in his dream, everything is exactly the same as in the movie theater. His brain must have memorized every fragment perfectly. Let's do this.
The Bahamas is synonymous with luxury beach vacations. Wide white sand beaches, clear waters of the Atlantic Ocean, and great coral reefs. But not many people know that one of the biggest diving tournaments also takes place there. The essence of the tournament is to dive to the maximum depth by holding your breath without any auxiliary tools and gear. At the competition, which was held in 2021, four new records were set in the first days. But it's the record of Alexei Molchanov that interests us. The athlete was able to dive using a cable to a depth of 413 feet. The total time he spent on the dive was 4 minutes and 45 seconds. Such an achievement was immediately listed in the Guinness Book of Records. Just imagine how physically and mentally fit it is. A man wraps his arm around a rope going somewhere in the abyss which in a few seconds will become the only thing leading him back to the natural environment. Slowly breathing in and out, the free diver prepares to hold his breath for more than the four minutes he needs to dive. By the way, there hasn't been a single major free diving competition in history without an emergency situation. Every time someone faints when surfacing. To make sure that nothing of the kind happens, even underwater, each athlete must be accompanied by equipped free divers. In the same year, by the way, Alexei set another record. This time, it was a record for diving under the ice. The Russian freediver crushed the mark of 262 feet. It happened in Lake Baikal in Russia. The diving process lasted almost three minutes, while the athlete was only in a monofin without scuba gear. But not only people can surprise us with their strange and, in a sense, crazy actions. Cats can do something, too. Don't believe it? You think that these sly creatures can only steal milk from the fridge and walk around the apartment? All right, I'll prove you wrong. A resident of Austria taught her cat tricks. The whiskered performer not only memorized many of the moves, but also managed to perform them in record time, thus entering the Guinness Book of Records. The eight-year-old cat named Alexis did 26 stunts and tricks in just one minute, and it wasn't spontaneous at all. The owner had been training her beloved pet for more than five years. If any of you also want to teach your beloved cat or dog some tricks, then you need a pretty popular but effective tip. The owner would feed the cat every time she did one of the tricks. Surprisingly, according to the rules of the Guinness World Records, you can't feed or praise the animal during the performance. For this, the owner was most worried. Nevertheless, the cat didn't let her friend down, and after a successful performance, she was rewarded. By the way, the owner decided not to stop there. She made plans to perform 30 tricks in a minute. We're waiting for new achievements. Let's do this. A guy named Chris Nickick became the first person in the world with Down syndrome to successfully complete all the trials of a triathlon, despite a break in training due to injuries. Moreover, he was even the first person with this syndrome in general to make such an attempt. The Ironman triathlon is the toughest test of strength. Not every healthy and physically fit person can go the whole distance. However, the distance is not easy and varied at all. First, athletes have to swim about two and a half miles in the open water. Then they get on bikes on which they should ride a little over 112 miles. And then they run a marathon for the last bit, 26 miles of running. And it'd be okay if the time was unlimited, but people are given only 17 hours to do this. Chris woke up every day with one thought and one goal in mind to become 1% better. And so it was every day of his training. The guy was sure that he would definitely pass this test of strength and will. And as we can say with confidence today, Chris got what he'd been working hard for for a long time. Well, isn't that a great motivation for each of us? Some people spend a lot of time preparing for incredibly difficult challenges, while others have absolutely no interest in testing their stamina and spirit. They see the meaning in pulling and lifting the biggest weight possible. And no, I'm not talking about another power lifter who bench pressed 220, 440, or even 660 pounds. That, at any rate, would not be as unique as this man's story. He was able to deadlift an almost 286.6 pound disc setup with just one finger. Of course, not everyone would go for such a record. Well, our guest is not a simple gym lover at all. This is martial artist Steve Keeler. In the record he set, Steve held the load for eight seconds. The idea to set such a record came to the man quite spontaneously. As Steve himself says, several years ago, he tried to lift a barbell with one finger and noticed that he had very strong bones. That was the spark that created the fire of desire to become a new record holder. Steve set a goal, pursued it, and eventually got his name in the Guinness Book of World Records. 
A German named Sebastian Stuttner has set a new surfing record. The guy conquered a wave that was more than 85 feet high. Studner rode the giant wave with a speed of more than 50 miles per hour in October 2020 in front of the residents of the Portuguese town of Nazar, where all this was happening. No human had ever done anything like that before. After a short period of time, the record was confirmed and right there, in Portugal, the surfer was awarded a Guinness certificate. Curiously enough, the previous record was set right there. So if any one of you is burning with the desire to add your name to the book of records or just wants to watch the huge waves from the side, you know where to go. Let's do this. Ice skating. I'm sure that many of you are not interested in this sport, and believe me, you lose a lot. It's an exciting and at the same time spectacular sport which can always shake to the core. Precisely that, by the way, happened quite recently during one of the preseason tournaments in the United States. People have long since gotten used to the fact that tournaments like this don't play a big role. Athletes come to these tournaments in not great shape and kind of test themselves to prepare for something more important. That's clearly not the case for a guy who was born in the United States. Ilya Malinin has personally written a new page in the history of ice skating in such an uninspiring, crowd-pleasing, and quiet atmosphere. Malinin was the first in history to land the quadruple axle cleanly. Before Malinin, many people had practiced and tried this jump, but no one had ever done it in competition before. The difficulty of the quadruple axle lies in its special technique, which is very difficult to take into account. This is the only one of the jumps performed by a forward move. This is the only classic landing called the backward outside, so the body completes an incomplete number of rotations in the air. The quadruple axle is four and a half turns in the air, while on the ice it feels like five turns. This feature of the axle has always made it a tricky and difficult element. At the same time, it's surprising that the jump was conquered by the guy incredibly quickly. He came in less than a month from timid attempts to a clean flying jump and became the first athlete in history who managed to perform the clean quadruple axle at competitions. Of course, he won that competition by a large margin. Nuclear Reactor Everything to do with it, the chemical and physical rules and stuff are incomprehensible things for most people. Some, even as adults, when they devote many years to it are still unable to understand relatively simple and basic things. However, there's a kid named Jackson Oswald who has personally built a working nuclear reactor in his home. Can you imagine that? The 12-year-old guy found out about the record of another wonderkind who had built a reactor at the age of 14. Jackson thought to himself, am I any worse than him? So he started repeating the record. The diligence and enthusiasm of his compatriot's record allowed the boy to break the previous record and become the youngest person to build a nuclear reactor. According to the teenager, all the work went smoothly with only himself involved. He did it all without anyone else's help. According to Jackson, all the work took about two years. During that time, he encountered many problems, but fortunately for him and everyone around him, he found a solution. The hardest part, if it makes any difference to anyone, was the construction of the airtight seal. That task took as long as six months. But no matter how hard it all went, the kid kept doing it and his parents encouraged him to do so. The young man's mother stated that she was excited about her son's project. I googled everything before he went into different stages, she said. And in fact, her worries are more than understandable. Who wouldn't be worried if their son was doing nuclear experiments at home at a young age? That's how it is. Someone at a young age hardly assembles an IKEA cabinet, and someone at the age of 12 builds a nuclear reactor. Goodbye, self esteem. That's all, guys. What record could you equal? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you later.